Hi, it's uh, Elliot Denby from Australia here, and uh, you're watching the Elliot Denby Show. I am, funnily enough, Elliot Denby. Denby and Company. I'm Elliot Denby, hello. Episode EDTV to 12 books of Tom Beerge. Hey, g'day, I'm Elliot Denby, and today I'm interviewing award winning actor, author, artist, and filmmaker Tom Beards. Hey! Hey, and we're in his late, uh, uh, late, where are we? Late Arrowhead home, uh, which is about three hours from Hollywood, and we're going to talk about 12 of his books. Impressive. Uh, is it? I just, uh, I can't sit still. Well, this is a favourite. The 12 Days of Christmas Novella. It's called The 12 Days of Christmas Novella. This is my latest book, it's my 12th book, and it's about a diverse group of residents that live in a small town right. and they're surprised. Somebody gets a partridge in a pear tree, somebody gets two turtle doves, somebody gets three French hens, etc. And they have to figure out who in Lake Lure is the secret Santa and why. That sounds really fun. That sounds really fun. Yeah, very cool. cool. So it's about um, 140 pages or so. Um, um it's looking and it sounds pretty commercial. Yeah, I, I think it's commercial, All right. but I'm very honest with the dialogue. And sometimes honest dialogue today, free speech is not commercial. But mm. I have Democrats in it who don't like Republicans. I have Republicans who don't like Democrats. I have atheists who don't agree with the religious people's perspective of the Bible and the afterlife. I've got uh, a lot of hetero characters, I've got a homosexual character, I've got trans character, and these people, so what if they disagree? They live, they live in the same town, right. and they like each other. Yeah. They live on the same planet. Right, so, yeah. and they like each other, they get along like real people. Not people online, but like real people. <laughs> no, absolutely. Right? Getting on online is a skill which uh, not many of us have, I feel. So, I um, mean, you reckon everyone could enjoy this book, it certainly sounds like it. I, I, I tried to fairly represent all the viewpoints because I like Republicans and Democrats and independents and gays and heteros the same. So, yeah, it's an unbiased book. Yeah, beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah, so, and, it, and it ends in a miraculous thing. And it's not necessarily a religious miracle, but it's a miracle that millions of people have experienced and they talk about it online near-death experiences oh, wow. so it happens in here and others are lifted by the incredible phenomenon that can go with it yeah. so it's feel good yeah no i can uh, absolutely visualize see it as a um like a feel-good movie like, it, yeah. yes and i've written a screenplay version oh really yeah already i have i've written it and oprah winfrey would be perfect for georgia johnson right there's a part for an 85 year old caucasian male and then there are parts for people in their 50s, 40s, 30s, 20s. Yeah, right across the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. That sounds uh, fantastic. So, uh, and the artwork in here as well is just uh, spectacular. So, um, yeah, no, it's uh, definitely one to uh, put on the, uh, on the Christmas shopping list, I reckon. Thanks. Thanks. And what's interesting about it is I did not, I did not want to write a Christmas book. What I did is I painted 12 paintings and then my Facebook fan said, oh, those are pretty cool. And I decided, oh, wow, well, could I make those into a book? So that's how it came about. Yeah. That's why it's not like any other book, because I had a puzzle to figure out. It's like, you know, they live in different houses and they have yeah. different backgrounds. Yeah. How can I tie them all together? And, it all and this is how. That's amazing. Here we go, the 12 days of Christmas novella. Forgiving Troy. Yeah. So now we're um, up to uh, your very first book, which uh, amazingly, or well, for good reason, won 10 book awards. Uh, and it also involves uh, a pretty amazing miracle, Forgiving Troy. Yes, there was a miracle in this. Yeah. Uh, it is a story that I had to share because what I was going through was so unbelievable. And yeah, I just felt I had an obligation to share it. Right. Soap opera Hunk's heart-wrenching and miraculous adventure to forgive his schizophrenic brother for killing their mum. Tragedy to triumph. Rain Man meets Dead Man Walking meets A Beautiful Mind. 
huge cinematic appeal, award-winning roles. Yes, Forgiving Troy has also been written into a screenplay. Fantastic, and rightfully so. I mean, I've read it, and it's just, uh, it's brilliant. It's, um, it's amazing. As the synopsis reads, screenplay opens on a Hollywood award show where clumsy young Tom Beards receives a soap opera award. Watching this on TV in Wisconsin, cute but jealous brother Troy, 19, terrorizes their mum Phyllis and kills her with a baseball bat. Their sister Hope discovers their mother's dead body and hyperventilating calls the cops. Cops also show up at Tom's Hollywood home to warn Tom that Troy may be on his way to kill Tom and that Troy called 911 saying it was Tom that killed their mum. These beginning biographical scenes are quick, tense and amid danger as unremorseful Troy is on the lam. He is eventually arrested, brought to trial and gets the first life meaning life sentence life meaning life sentence in Wisconsin history. Now you read. Uh, more of the synopsis. Uh, though the actual courtroom arguments debate whether Troy is schizophrenic or faking it, citing conflicting reports from dozens of doctors who treated Troy, occasionally Troy's point of view shows he does indeed have schizophrenia. The three very handsome Beards brothers all have intense emotional character arcs. Tom is not the typical soap star. He is gay, closeted, battling social anxiety. Greg wants to make it in Hollywood, but resorts to his plan B of trying to be an agent and then plan C, marrying for money. Troy is mean, but becomes infantile and, remor and remorseful. This is because of Tom's prison visits, he becomes remorseful. Hope is conservative, then open-minded. More of the synopsis. Tom is terrified to discover that the first time he visits Troy in prison, there is no dividing glass, so essentially Black Bell Troy can kill him, as he threatened many times, and receive no more jail time. But Tom stays and risks his life anyway to honor his dead mother's command and finds that Troy is no longer a mean wolf, but instead he's rotted into a babbling, incoherent, almost non-existent shell of a human being. It is clear the spirit of deceased mom Phyllis sent Tom to help Troy, and Tom does by demanding medicines which do help phenomenally. Mm. But Tom has no intention of forgiving Troy, not yet. The heart-wrenching, so more of the synopsis, the heart-wrenching but explosive prison visiting room scenes between a broken soap opera has been, questioning the price of fame and growing paranoid at social events, and his incarcerated schizophrenic brother putting together the pieces of why he killed a wonderful mom put this on par with Rain Man and Dead Man Walking. Compelling, sensitive, and peculiar dialogue ensue as Tom helps Troy remember what happened. Troy's guilt and delusions come and go, and he finds the logical reasons why he will go to hell, and Tom must jump through crazy hoops to save his brother Troy. Absolutely. Forgiving Troy is an uplifting and inspiring experience of transcendence, a highly dramatic and compelling testimony on the resilience of the human spirit, illustrated perfectly by Tom's expressionism paintings. In the end, Sister Hope surprises Tom and Troy in the prison visiting room where the three are finally united, leading to an enormous emotional catharsis and forgiveness. Powerful, powerful moment. Absolutely. Uh, and it's a happy ending for Tom career-wise as well. Fleeing the anxiety and overstimulus of Hollywood after 30 years, he finds peace in a forest cabin and purpose painting portraits. Tom also owns the American Art Awards, each year awarding the 20 best American galleries and about 500 artists in 70 countries. Impressive. Yeah. That's so impressive. So you read it. What, uh, anything you want to ask me about it? Um, well, I don't know, I mean, it's such a journey, like, it's so compelling from, like, the first page, and, um, I mean, more of an opinion, I guess, like, I was uh, thoroughly gripped all the way through, um, it helps, like, the reader, um, understand you more, um, and understand someone like Troy a lot more, I mean, we're all, uh, very, uh, complex creatures for various reasons, and, no, it's just such a fascinating, 
um, such a fascinating read and such a fascinating kind of um, delve into the human psyche and um, and human behaviors it's just uh, I mean it's so you know the one can only imagine how um, you would react anyone would react with this this kind of intense you know almost um, unbelievable situation and I think it's a testament to you um, to be able to um, share that with with everyone well thanks also uh, because I had gone through this this unbelievable event that I had to share uh, I had to share personal stuff I had to share embarrassing stuff and I had to do it I love that about it it's just so real so raw and uh, there's not many people out there that would have the courage to share that with the world so but that was like a requirement to tell the story yeah absolutely. which is why a lot of my other books are just as uh, embarrassing or and open and honest. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's what makes them so appealing. I mean, you know, there's uh, there's no holes barred and, um, you know, the truth is out there on the table, which is it, it is really is rare. People like to, um, you know, kind of um, hold back a little bit, but there's no holding back here. And you even make yourself, you know, sound, you know, you don't paint yourself in a, in like mm -hmm. a, in, in like a, you know, a, in a light that is always favorable and that is no, uh, I yeah. couldn't do that no. I couldn't do that not, not to be true real raw and yeah. honest and uh, thanks fantastic just like my other one my, my next memoir <laughs> young gay and restless yeah slightly um, slightly different uh, context slightly different um, <laughs> but the yeah, through fantastic. line the through line is the unabashed honesty yes absolutely right? it's all that's the Tom Baird's way you know so um this is your second memoir, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Young, Gay, and Restless, My <laughs> Scandalous On-Screen and Off-Screen Sexual Liberation. Sounds delicious. Sounds delicious. I overshare. I wrote it for personal reasons because one of my core issues in this lifetime is to remain free as I can, you know, to be of high vibration and to defy limits. And when I was raised as a gay Catholic boy, I was born 60 years ago, you know, if gays weren't sentenced to prison, they were sentenced to hell. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. so we've come a, a long way since then. 100%. An amazing way. Yeah, and like, if not sentenced to prison or sentenced to hell, then even like, you know, sentenced to, um, you know, a, a lifetime of bullying and, um, and everything. So it's, uh, yeah, no, it's liberating to, uh, to see and read this, um, you're definitely an important part of the um, change in, um, you know, in culture because you were so prolific um, on our screens, and uh, so many people were um, know of you. And um, so years ago, you know, you were the first gay soap opera legacy character to come out. Um, and then when, back when it was, and uh, when I came hard. back in 2009, which was my idea after being dead for 20 years, right? As then, you do. Yeah, yeah. I have to do that with my um, own <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and they uh, they wrote my character as gay as well, and that's what I wanted. Yeah. So no, I came back as gay, which was a surprise, and then my character was gay. Personally, it it was a growth for me. Yeah. Like a young closeted cowboy from the sexually shaming with Midwest becomes a soap opera star and 30 years later exposes his amusing and complicated carnal journey, including sexual assaults, trysts with stars, a proposition from a bishop, mm. we've all had that, romance with a famed billionaire, non-committal relationships, social anxiety, taboo, fantasies, penile enlargement. Mm, okay, sounds uh, intriguing. Mm. Psycho fan roommate, online hookups, gym sex, midlife crisis, Leaving Hollywood, impotence, rekindled romance, the list goes on, my God. <laughs> right, yeah, right, look right. how thick the book is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Jesus. 400 pages. <laughs> There's nude pics and it's a uh, humorously graphic language, sexually explicit, but like I said, uh, that, that's too rebellious to sexual shaming that I experienced so many years ago. Yeah, I think a lot of us, uh, like gay people in particular, gay men, have a lot of that shame growing up, so it's uh, a liberating read. Um, your fans from the Young the Restless, Marrow's Plays, Murder She Wrote, Matlock and Old Dog's New Tricks. Um, I'm sure they have been very titillated uh, reading this. I'm sure you've got a lot of uh, interesting yeah. responses. You know what, it's really more neurotic than it is erotic. <laughs> I 
Right, okay. Well, we'll, just, well, you know, looking at some of those pics maybe makes me feel a little <laughs> yeah. erotic because I don't know what to do with myself. But, uh, so, um, it's, a, it's a great book. Do you regret, like, sharing any of these, like, personal experiences? Because they are, you know, really well, quite personal. I don't out anybody. Right. You know, so when I talk about the celebrities that I've had sex with or the celebrity that sexually harassed me, groping me, whatever, I, I don't name who that is because this is not about uh, trying to hurt somebody or uh, to wrong anybody. I'm not about it's that. It's about sharing yeah, your yeah, experience. Yeah. yeah, so I don't regret. No, I don't right. regret uh, embarrassing stuff. It's just so refreshing to, you know, have someone being so honest about, you know, what actually goes on out there rather than pretending that it doesn't. Or you hear rumours about things, but it's like, oh, no, no, that doesn't actually happen. That's just, um, you know, a, a, an urban myth or something. Well, but, good, because, yeah. you know, I, I, I would want to open that conversation more, you know, as I do... Yeah, I don't want people shamed for their feelings. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you doing this, um, speaking about unmentionables, uh, so to speak, um, yeah, it it's gives others inspiration. It certainly inspired me. So uh, thank you for, for this. <laughs> how men really feel about being sexually assaulted. You've written how men really feel about being sexually assaulted. So... Um, so, yeah, it's, this is a little more light-hearted, I suppose you could say, whereas this is other people's accounts of um, their sexual assaults. Um, what was your motivation for assembling a book like this? Well, it bothers me when a group or a mob presses everybody to think the same way about anything, whether it's politics, whether it's about a sexual act, whether it's, you know, it bothers me that there's one way you're supposed to think or one thing you're supposed to say. And so I wanted to compile uh, like 60 stories from 60 different guys that have experienced being uh, sexually assaulted. And because they don't all think the same. Right. You know, and, about it. And I guess and their experiences would have been different, like from different, all different situations, different, you know, different. family members or, you know. Joe blocks him down the street or anything, I guess, yeah, so, um, you know, it doesn't matter um, how it happens or the context, it's just, it's still, you know, a sexual assault, absolutely. Right. Now, for me, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be sexually, uh, I wanted to have sex with men. Yeah. As a boy, I always did. I, I had father fantasies, I had brother fantasies, I had uncle fantasies, I had grandpa fantasies. And I don't want anybody shamed for their sexual fantasies, you yeah. know? Now, I never did have sex with, with any men or my family members. I never did, but, but I'm not, I'm not going to be shamed for it. Yeah. Now, you, what was your, did you experience? Well, uh, I mean, having, on that note, like I remember when I was six, um, six or seven, I'm not sure how old you were when you were like wanting to, you know, have these, you know, interactions with men. Um, my whole childhood. Yeah. I mean, I remember um, my mum had a book called Make It Happy and um, it uh, was basically a sex, a sex education book, but it was quite graphic. So this would have been in like the early 80s that um, I, I found the book. So it had um, like photos all the way through it of like naked men and naked, naked women. And um, I remember seeing the photos of, of naked men when I was like seven years old, so back in 1982, and just sort of like having this reaction to it. My body like had a reaction to it. And um, um, I mean, but I, you know, I have had a, um, a recurring theme of uh, kind of being, well, for want of a better word, molested, I suppose. The, the book says, the book back says, uh Tom Beers continues to stun readers with bold disclosures in this new book, querying 60 male sexual assault survivors. The content is raw, graphic in text, unedited, misspelling and typos intended to authenticate these victims' gripping, incredulous, and more often than not horrifying histories. Still, a few do not regret the assaults and give their reasons why. The surprising takeaway is that only one thing can be more damaging than boys being raped, and that is boys being shamed for 70 years. Incest, kidnaps, gang rapes, pastors with guns, and gay men taking bribes to hide their naughty homosexuality. Your heart will break as the obstacles such young men, such young souls had to endure. Mm, that's, um, 
it's fascinating and it's just yeah there's, i mean i don't know um i don't care what some people say but like you know homosexuality is it, it's still not accepted in the same way that heterosexuality is um, and i don't know when it ever will be i mean yeah it's just uh it's still frowned upon in certain circles but, do you, you notice know, any difference between uh, homosexuality in USA and homosexuality in Australia? You know, there's that general acceptance. Um, you, know, you very rarely outwardly see people being homophobic, like on the street, for instance, and so forth. But I still Great. think there's a lot of homose uh, homo <laughs> well, homosexuality, but homophobia behind closed doors. Sure. Yeah. So, likewise, racism, I'm sure. It's one thing to appear, you know, welcoming and um, friendly, but, you know, People are like they, you know, mm -hmm. they look like this. You know, they, they put on their uh, social face mm -hmm. and then put behind closed doors. All right, now uh, coming up. How to look and feel 20 years younger. Well, right now, in fact, how to look and feel 20 years younger. <laughs> no, it's um, who would like if you want to. We should take a poll. How how um, young does uh, Tom look? I mean, you know, no one guess. Well, you would guess it, you know how he was, but uh, you know what? I feel so young too, though. Yeah, which you makes know? a massive difference. That, that's what it's about. Yeah, I see other sixty-year-olds, and I'm like, why are you settling? Why? Are, why do you think life is over? Why are you going downhill? I'm still going uphill. Absolutely, it's a, definitely a mindset, and it's a mindset that a lot of people, you know, need to uh, kind of subscribe to because it, uh, you know, a lot of the time it is all in the head. So, um, what do we got here? Well, speaking of head, in this book, <laughs> I describe. Uh, mind tricks, uh, exercise tricks, food tricks, and cosmetic tricks. And I'm very open about cosmetic surgeries that I've had. Yeah, you being honest yet again. I mean, you can't, just can't help yourself. It's true. Most most uh, famous people would not share what I have, but uh, yeah, that's kind of just who I am. Yeah, I, I overshare. Yeah, well, yeah. it's refreshing because um, if you're not telling the truth, then it's um, basically a lie. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you absolutely look 20 years younger. And um, also included in the book um, is 100 vegan recipes. Uh, delicious, delicious, delicious. Yeah. yeah. Real simple, real simple meals that I have. And you've had some of my simple meals. I've you've had, had some... my lentil soup, which Yum. is so easy. Yeah, and I was like, lentils, no thanks. And yeah. right now I'm kind of addicted to, it, to uh, the soup. And you've yeah. had my cookies. Oh, well, yeah. More which addiction. are so healthy. <laughs> but there's nothing bad in those cookies. My cookies right. have, have a, a ripe banana, applesauce, steamed sweet potato, oats, it's got the pumpkin. some pine pollen. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. And then adding a fruit and a nut. Yeah. So good. It's, it's so good. And um, we haven't got one here now. I want it. I know, right? God damn it. Absolutely anyone. Anyone of any age, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just because you look for um, sorry, 20 years younger. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to be 60 to read this book or anything along those lines. And so, you don't um, have to be vegan to enjoy some of these vegan options. No, of course. I mean, you know, I, I'm not vegetarian or vegan. I, oh. you know, I don't eat that much meat, but um, you know, I have my chicken and fish, but you know, everything that I've tried from this book is goddamn delicious. Beer chart, volume one. And next we've got, um, you've got like six volumes of your own art. Like I can't sit still. Uh, in Beards Art Volume 1, I have uh, landscapes, nature, the 12 Days of Christmas Cottages, storybook houses, tree houses, lumberjacks, cowboys, centaurs. Lumberjacks. Beards Art Volume 2. Uh, this, I think, is my best work. This is my expressionism. Okay. Like I would spill my emotions if I was anxious from an event. Yeah, you can see that. It would be really heavy stuff like that. So that's my expressionism in my Blue X paintings. Beard's Art, Volume 3. My Volume 3 is a bunch of tasteful nudes in trees. I like a nudist in right? a tree. Right? Very done. Just be careful up there. <laughs> Beard's Art. Volume four, <laughs> yeah. and then uh, volume four, Beards Art Volume Four, is uh, is like four hundred of the portraits that I've done because I'm always painting people's pets, or their grandmas or whatever. They contact me through Facebook, they private message me, and you know I can do their portraits long distance. Four, and so there's four hundred in there, pretty much. I yeah. just like don't know how. Have you been like reincarnated three or four times so you can actually get all of this done? That's Dude, I, I, I don't have a social life. I don't do anything else. Uh, I'm pretty lucky that in this lifetime, 
I have only done what I've wanted to do. I've only worked on projects. Projects, 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 projects. And the universe somehow supplies me with income through that. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's idyllic. That's yeah. like, I, I mean, want that life, damn you. Right? Yeah. I mean, most people are working and they don't like their work. No. And I'm always working on what I like. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, it is a, um, a gift. 100 black and white male nude prints and 100 black and white photos of the artist. But um, this is 100 black and white male nude prints plus 100 black and white photos of the one and only Tom Bean. Right, it is tasteful stuff. There's mm, it is yeah, tasty. The, 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 the <laughs> male nude paintings, they don't have erections. And, Damn. Yeah, and my pictures don't have erections. <laughs> <laughs> Semi, maybe. Yeah, but know, uh, it, it looks, you know, healthy and um, <laughs> like it's functional. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. No, it's. Uh, sorry, I should put this away. It's a I'll cool. Look it's at a cool it. coffee table book. It is. I'll, yeah. I'll look yeah. at it later when right. uh, before I go to bed. Quiet. Maybe yeah, when I go to bed. Have you seen this? Oh, nice. Pretty cool stuff. I like. I like. Sweet, sir. I love. I love a lot. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 nice very, coffee. Yeah, very impressive, very impressive. So, um, yeah, I had no idea you painted so many. I but, can't uh, sit still. Um, now, you also created something which I'm uh, personally interested in, and because I've been uh, studying tarot for the last... Tarot. Well, yeah, tarot, uh -huh. sorry, not tarot. You're a tarot reader? I'm a tarot reader. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Yeah, my mum used to read. Actually, um, it's funny story, it's not a story, it's just like a 10 a second statement, but my mother stopped reading tarot because she said the tarot cards were too accurate. So she was actually um, kind of a little intimidated by how, how accurate the cards were, and so she uh, decided to stop reading because it kind of freaked her out, I guess you could say. And uh, do, 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 do. The 100 blue X cards. <laughs> so um, you've got like a tarot-like deck and book, is that right? Yes. I. Uh... Yes, I, I created my 100 different tarot cards. I created 100 blue X cards. So there, it's like tarot, it's like that. Right. And I created some, uh, so people can use it as tarot. Wow, that sounds fantastic. Beds includes a recollection of his own psychic experiences, out of body experience, telepathy, clairvoyance, clairaudience, 911 premonition, past life occurrence, was that time travel? I, yes, uh, my whole life I've been a spiritual seeker. That's actually been the most important pulling aspect. Right. You know? Uh, so, yeah, of course I believe in, in spirit contacts, which is why I wanted to write. They want to help us. This other book, They Want to Help Us. So I collected about 50 people's accounts where they themselves have had spirit contacts, like spirit guides helping them at different times. So I love that stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I'm really into it as well. Like, ever since a kid, it's just been so fascinating of, uh, you know, because, you know, as human beings, we surely, you know, not conscious of every single thing that goes on in the universe or even, you know, on a planet. So it's like, what else is out there? Indeed. Yes. Everything's out there. Everything. Everything. Exactly. <laughs> Anything is possible. Right. So they want to help us. 50 sources in their own words reveal for the first time over 100 true life miraculous spirit accounts. This extraordinary collection of exhilarating, upbeat and inspiring histories is compiled by Tom Beds, who millions know for playing Philip Chancellor III on The Young and the Restless. That's him. Most are unaware though that Beds is an award winning author award-winning filmmaker, award-winning fine artist. That is impressive and has himself experienced over 50 years of paranormal events including seances, premonitions, clairaudience, clairvoyance, card reading, astral travel, out-of-body experience and more. Right, but it's not like this happens all day. Constantly. You know, like no, no, no. 24-7. Like, like, like maybe I've had a dozen experiences in my whole 60 years so but i'm grateful for those and i try for those all the yeah, time it's yeah it's amazing it's, it's uh yeah, yeah. Well, why not right well exactly you know who knows what's out there i was uh at a place called hello hello the place is not called hello hello but it's called um um uluru which is in um the outback in australia i was walking around the bottom of Ayers rock 
um, with my partner at the time, John. Um, I happened upon a piece of rubbish that I saw um, under the rock, so I walked over to it. Um, no one else decided to walk over and pick up this piece of rubbish. I decided to. I picked it up, I opened it up. It was someone's itinerary for their troubles. And then as I read it, um, I read um, Elliot Falls and then I tripped over a rock straight away. Uh, and your yeah. name's Elliot. And my name's and Elliot and I fell. fell. And um, yeah, John was there to, um, weird. yeah, it was weird uh, to witness the account of all the people that could have picked up that piece of rubbish, right. you know, anywhere, you know, and Elliot's not exactly um, no, that common kind of name. name. So no, no. Yeah, just little things like that make me question, you know, make me question what's going on. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. No, it was really cool. It was actually a really cool experience. The synchronicity. Synchronicity. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, it's all connected, I reckon, in some way. The um, spirits are helping us along, perhaps. So, um, uh, on, uh, I had a 9-11, more than a pr premonition. Right. Yeah. The night before 9-11, I was in bed with my ex and our dogs, and uh, all of a sudden, I was trying to get to sleep, and I was having lucid dreams, where I was half awake, half not, right. and all of a sudden, for the first time, black, nothing. I was like, wow, what's that? What's that? And then all of a sudden, I saw a little light smear, a little light smear, and I, and I was totally awake with my eyes closed thinking, what is that? That's and then cool, more yeah. and more and more, and suddenly there were hundreds of light smears coming, coming, uh, like I was in a tunnel, Toward and you, yeah. I could feel the concern they had, you know? So what, why? So that night I tried to figure out why. What was that about? What was that about? And yeah. then the next morning, 9-11 happened, wow. all these people were, were dead, and I saw the night before the spirits rushing to them to help. That's oh, what, it, it was like spirits trying to help them. Yeah, yeah, what, yeah, 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 the, the spirit, because like, I felt their concern. I yeah. felt, oh, and they were just rushing, 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 needed to help this big thing, and there were thousands of them. And I saw that the night before, which is weird, because it's like, so it was like destined or something. I don't know, yeah, I don't know. That's, uh, that was one of my experiences. Yeah. Um, so, um, wrapping it up, what do you reckon, um, so as a whole, what do you reckon your 12 amazing books say about you? Like, what is it, you know? That you... I can't sit still. <laughs> creating, constantly yeah. creating. Yeah, sitting still gets you nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what, um, what I get from you is that you've got a, well, obviously, a extremely strong creative drive. I mean, 12 books and just a like thousand paintings, thousands of paintings. Scripts, it's just like, yeah, yeah, just like go, go, go. Like I said before, I don't know how you get the time to do it all in one lifetime. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, so impressive. Um, you've also got a strong sexual drive, which is, uh, yeah, sure. which is, which I'm fine with, to be perfectly honest. I mean, if these are the results of that strong sexual drive, and who knows what else. You've got a strong sexual drive. <laughs> Very much. Well, you know, I've um, experienced a, a bit of, um, you know, a, a, few, a, a few interactions in my time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, um, um, You've absolutely got a you know massive spiritual drive. I mean, you've had the premonitions. Absolutely. You feel like that's you know a big um, guiding force for you. By Every sense. night I go to sleep listening to near death experiences because that's just so lifting, it's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's like yeah, that's amazing. And um, I feel as though you've got a really yeah a really really strong desire to um, to educate and or at least inspire other people, like to kind of you know. Create and and um, have them be comfortable with their sexuality and, and everything. Just it, it is an inspiration. I mean, I know I've cool inspired by you. So mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. I feel as though uh, yeah, yep. that's Tom Beds. Yep. <laughs> Just five percent. Elliot Denby, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here's this twelve books are at Amazon.com or Barnes and Noble. USA readers can get them autographed directly from Tom's website. The links are below.